But first, let's start here in Israel in studio now. Is cracking me up is Maya Margit with an inside look at the creative way Israeli prisons are rehabilitating inmates. Uh, I forgot to mention you are our culture correspondent. Sure. Hi, Maya. How you doing? Not bad. Sorry, not bad. I just watched this video <laughs> clip. I can't wait to show our viewers it's exactly what it's about. Uh, it's pretty <laughs> funny, but um, but it's a really interesting story um, that you did. You went to these prisons and and made a report about it. Tell us a little more before we see the report. So basically, this is about hip hop and specifically rap music. Uh, the Israeli Prison Service has been offering rap music workshops in prison for inmates to help them rehabilitate themselves and maybe help uh, make ensure that they don't return to the prison system. Mm -hmm. It's a way of giving them a, a kind of activity, a therapeutic activity, a way to express themselves in a different way than they're used to. Right. Uh, and I went to the prison to actually take a look and see how they do these workshops. Um, let's take a look. They might not be famous, and they probably won't tour the world. But for these teens, rap music is a ray of hope in an otherwise grim world. Welcome to Ofek Juvenile Prison, Israel's only correctional facility for minors. 120 adolescents between the ages of 14 and 18 call this place home, even if only for a short while. The minors here have been charged with all sorts of crimes, from robbery to sexual offenses, even murder. Ofek is the end of the line for youngsters going through Israel's justice system. No longer children, and not yet adults. Many of the juvenile detainees find themselves here after several rounds of arrests and court dates. One of the most important things for them now, rehabilitation. And as part of that, Israel's prison service has organized rap music workshops. Fourteen teens are participating. Israeli rapper Ken Dog is here to help them fine-tune their skills. Most of their felonies uh, involve uh, violence and they can't come from uh, hard neighborhoods. So uh, things that relate to that, they, they deal with uh, poverty, they deal with uh, violence with each other and uh, towards each other and towards uh, someone else. That's why they ended up here. So I give them uh, a way to express themselves about that. Many of the teens taking part have never touched an instrument, nor have they ever sung a song before. But this is where rap music is a true lifesaver. There's no need to be a poet or have a beautiful voice. At the end of the workshop, the 14 teens record a song. Each one contributed a few verses to the final product. I wrote about my experiences here at Ofik, the difficulties here and outside, about Israel, also about what I plan to do when I'm released. Personally, I learned that instead of acting out about something, it's better to sing about it. I like to sing. It's not a cliche. Music really connects between people. Because once you give them this platform to, to say what's on their mind, so each one gives his own story, but they all speak the same language, the language of hip-hop. The goal of the workshop is not just about tapping into those creative juices. It's also about bringing something positive to a place where the outside world and freedom seems so far away. We really try to expose them to as many different workshops as possible that will hopefully get them out of the cycle they're currently in. But the real test comes after they leave the prison, to see whether they will end up back here, which only time will tell. Much has been said about the failure of prison systems to correct criminal behavior. But if these rap lessons end up making a difference for these youths, that will be music to their ears. It was really interesting uh, to see this whole process and especially how a hip-hop artist here in Israel is helping these prisoners. Yeah, that's part of the workshop. They actually bring in a professional musician, a professional rapper. And, uh, you know, despite the light topic of the, you know, it seems like a light kind of piece, right. a light story, but it's really a serious prison. It's a maximum security prison. Mm. These, uh, these are minors with many issues. Some of them have been convicted of murder, some of them of sexual assault, some of them just of theft or, you know, lower crimes, I would say. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's a very kind of serious atmosphere, very oppressive uh, place to be when you're walking in there. It's a very stressful environment. So I think that this kind of workshop allows them to express themselves in a different way. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's quite important, actually. And you were in all areas of this prison. You saw them uh, in the yard uh, mm -hmm. and getting checked. And you also were inside this recording studio. Was it just a totally 
totally different vibe once they enter that studio. The, the recording studio was kind of a makeshift recording studio. It wasn't a professional recording studio by right, any means. But it didn't look like a jail. It didn't look like a prison. It, it didn't look like a jail, but it felt like a jail. There were security mm. guards there okay. everywhere. We weren't by ourselves in this nice little workshop. Yeah, you know? the things you don't see uh, yeah, behind the cameras. It felt pretty oppressive, but it, it, it's very interesting that they use rap music because, like I said, you don't need to be a poet. You don't need to have an amazing voice. Uh, it's something that people can learn, and they, they learn to express their emotions that way. And rap music actually started as a form of protest music. Uh, in the 70s and 80s in New York in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. So I think it's uh, quite appropriate that they chose this uh, form of uh, workshop. Sure, and it's relatable. Maya, thanks so much for this. Sure.